Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and for this week's vlog I sat down with Sander van Doorn in his studio to talk with him about his classic riff. Enjoy! Sander van Doorn was born as Sander Ketelaars on February 28, 1979 in Eindhoven, the Netherlands. Besides being a DJ and producer, Sander also runs his own label, Doorn Records. Of course, most people know him as Sander van Doorn, but he's also behind projects such as Sandler, Sam Sharp and of course Purple Haze. One of Sander's biggest hits is the track Riff, which was also the very first release on Dorn Records. For this week's vlog, I sat down with Sander in his beautiful studio to talk with him about the story behind Riff, his future plans and more. My first question to Sander was how old he was when he became interested in dance music. Uh, I was was pretty pretty young actually. Um, I would say around uh, uh, when I was four or five years old. Uh, my brother already bought a lot of records uh, from arts like the Bash Modes, and you know they were kind of like in the forefront with the whole housey beat kind of uh, you know basis in, in their productions. Uh, so uh, I would say that that's that's the first spark for me uh, into dance music, and um, well you know from then on I, I started buying my own uh, records like Pump Up the Jam from. Technotronic was my first small vinyl and uh, I started buying more CDs and, and, and records and, and I would say you know I, I was 16 years old when I first uh, got interested in doing it myself um, when I, I was was at a birthday party of, of a cousin of mine uh, he had two uh, vinyl decks not even Technics which is like home home decks and uh, he was playing hardcore vinyls and uh, you know I, I tried it out myself with a small mixer and um, it went pretty well so that's when I decided it's, you know I want to do something with this as well so I would say when, when, when I was around 16 years old I, I really started doing uh, uh, you know uh, stuff in music myself yeah but was it also the time when you started like producing um, I started producing when I was around 17 18 years old uh, my brother came home uh, with uh, like a, a drum computer uh, a groove box MC 303 so you could program your beats but also sounds uh, you had like a small keyboard uh, so that's my first step uh, that was my first step in uh, producing music. Uh, so I, f I, f I figured out uh, using only the groove box wasn't enough. So I had to use uh, a certain DAW to, 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 to you know to get a project uh, going. Um, so I started experimenting uh, with with the computer. Um, I had a, a software program called Asset. I think it was around that time. Uh, kind of like similar to Ableton these days, but very very basic. Um, so that was around 17, 18 years old when I started you know experimenting with, with doing sounds myself okay um, in 2001 your very first release ever came out the track uh, summer melodies which you did under the alias frequency uh, were there any artists that influenced you when you made that track um, well, you know, yeah, that was my first release. Uh, that, that was also the theme song of, of the party frequency, uh, which was being held in, in, in my hometown, uh, Eindhoven. Uh, the, my inspirations uh, around that time were teachers like Marco V. Um, he was a resident at the, at the dance saloon in, uh, in Eindhoven. Um, so I, I really fell in love with, with the combination uh, he made between housey beats and techy beats and, 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 and trancey melodies. Um, so he was a big influence. Um, artists like uh, like Chester and Armin as well um, also uh, uh, you know bands like see uh, well see Ross no that was later on uh, I would say bands like Depeche Mode and Prodigy um, um, they, they all you know inspired me for for you know my sound uh, but the problem was with, with with the track it was 12 minutes long uh, I didn't know how to you know make a track that was suitable for DJs so I, I think the first breakdown was like three minutes and then the second break was also like like three or four minutes and when I started DJing myself uh, professionally I really learned how to you know make a track compact and make it one track not three tracks in one so mm -hmm. you know that, that was my first uh, you know experiment with that yeah so in uh, 2004 you started to release music under the name Sander van Doorn uh, and three years later in the year 2007 you started your own label Doorn Records the very first release on that label was the track Riff um, can you tell us where the inspiration for Riff came from yeah you know um, Riff has always been a, a special track for me uh, because uh, it really uh, got me, uh, you know, in the spotlight uh, with uh, with DJs, um, DJs for, uh, ranging from techno uh, also to house and and trance. Um, I, I was basically just in the studio uh, putting in a beat, and 
<coughs> I, I, I just figured out this new battery uh, pack with a lot of you know crazy drum sounds uh, so I started messing about so I had the rhythm and then um, I just bought a new synth from Dave Smith the poly evolver uh, which was kind of like partially uh, analog and partially digital uh, combined with a very cool uh, guitar sounding grunge uh, effect um, so I made that sound and I, I thought it was perfectly suited for the track but at first I didn't know what to do with the track so the melody was a lot, a lot more complex than it, it actually uh, came about uh, but you know I, I, it didn't really work out for me so I, I, I put it back in the fridge and I took it out again a few months later and then I decided to make it more techy and more simple and, and that's how uh, yeah riff came about and uh, yeah that was you know the, the, the whole effect uh, snowball effect it created was, was phenomenal yeah so uh, what was the hardest part of the production? Um, well, I would say the hardest part was finding the right direction I wanted to go to. Um, you know, I was still in, in a whole phase of, of, of really discovering myself as, as an artist. You know, am I more techno? Am I more housey? Or am I more trancey? So, uh, you know, that's that's a lot of information to put in one track. So, uh, I, w I would say that the, the, the trickiest part was to, to you know, uh, make it something that, that was suited for every everything. And, and in the end, it became, you know, kind of like a unique identity kind of sound. Identity. Identity, yeah. there you go. Yeah. yeah. So <coughs> how long did it take you to finish the entire track, you think? Uh, that track in total took me about a month to get it perfect. Okay. Yeah, but some tracks, you know, it, 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 it can take uh, two days to finish. Other tracks just take a long time, you know, to get it perfect. And, and Riff was a track, you know, it, it wasn't finished in two days, definitely yeah. not. Yeah. So do you remember when you played it in a set for the very first time? Yeah, yeah, I, I actually um, I had a pretty good production run and um, it took a while, uh, you know, for my next show. Um, so I, I, I finished Riff, but also by Any Demand <coughs> and also the King of My Castle remix. So th those were three tracks I never played before. Uh, so I remember doing a show over in Ireland and I played all three tracks uh, for the first time in my set. And, you know, the, the, the crowd response was, was huge. And, you know, you always know if nobody knows the track and the first response is like this then you know it's it's, it's gonna be cool so uh, uh, yeah that, that was that was a set I, I can still remember the first track till the, till the last track yeah. definitely so uh, Riff also got remixed by techno legend Carl Cox um, he doesn't really do a lot of remixes so was it difficult to, to get him to do a remix uh, well I, I actually uh, some, uh, I met him for the first time in uh, Australia when we were doing a big tour uh, that's also the first time I met uh, Ferry Corson actually and uh, I, I didn't even know that he was playing Riff so when I heard him play it in the sets I was I was pretty amazed because you know it was the legend Carl Cox you know a techno DJ and uh, so I started talking to him about it and uh, you know I, I, I thought why not ask him you know which would, would be up for doing a remix and he was like yeah 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 absolutely so it was very easy and uh, you know uh, you did a great job and uh, it was was really cool you know to have him you know as, as the remixer of, of Riff yeah, yeah, yeah. super cool um, so Riff had a huge support list uh, as you already said both from trans DJs but also house and techno DJs uh, do you still remember a few DJs that supported the track uh, yeah, well, um, you know, from the techno side, um, it was uh, Carl Cox, uh, also uh, Umec uh, played the track. Um, on, the, on the Tron side, uh, pretty much everybody. <coughs> and on the house side, um, I would say it's like these, like Layback Luke, who was playing like more housey back uh, then. I think he also played uh, played that track uh, as well as Benny Minassi, like a few uh, Dutch uh, house mm -hmm. uh, house DJs. So uh, uh, yeah, it was a pretty pretty wide range of yeah. DJs. Yeah, that's pretty cool for the first release, like on one label. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what's your favorite memory when it comes to the release of Griff? Uh, the favorite memory, you know, I, w I would say definitely, um, uh, it, it, you know, it was a special track which had a few, you know, uh, um, um, pinnacle moments. Uh, well, the first one obviously was was the first time playing it out over in Ireland, um, uh, ha having a remix by Carl Cox it was, was was amazing. But also, um, <clears throat> I was doing a set over in Poland and uh, in this club, and I said beforehand to uh, to the sound engineer, could you please not record my set because 
because I've got a few tracks I don't want to get out yet. So he said, no, no, it's okay. Uh, it's not gonna be recorded, but he did record it and he put it on the internet. So a uh, riff was already out before it got out. Uh, everybody, uh, uh, you know, figured out it was my new track. Uh, so, it, you know, it, it kind of put a strain on the sales uh, in, in Eastern Europe, but it created such a buzz, you know, in that country for everybody, you know, debating on whether it was my track or not, that in the end I got a lot of, you know, gigs in return for it. So, you know, we worked out in the end. Yeah. So yeah, thank you very much for recording. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot, yeah. Um, so besides uh, Sonder van Doorn, you also released under the name uh, Purple Haze, uh, and you also do sets as Purple Haze. Uh, for the people that haven't witnessed a Purple Haze set yet, what is the big difference between a Sonder van Doorn set and a Purple Haze set? Yeah, you know, Purple Haze is, uh, for me, is, is a more darker side. Um, for me, it's uh, whether I'm in a studio or behind the decks, is, is creating a whole different atmosphere. For me, as, as a producer, it's, it's also a very important part because uh, I need to challenge myself constantly. I, I, I always want to find something new to, to produce. And uh, Purple Haze has that, that, that new sound for me in the studio, uh, which kind of is also a revival of, of Purple Haze tracks I already did 12 years ago. Um, but you know, uh, for when it comes to live sets, it's a lot more storytelling. Uh, it's uh, especially when you're playing for three hours uh, in, in in a club. Uh, it's starting, you know, with a certain vibe and and really, you know, slowly and gradually build it up and build the energy. Uh, and it can range from from very slow to like 125 all the way uh, up to 138. So it's uh, it's 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 really a, a building moment, you know, with with Purple Haze compared to Santa Dorn, which are usually uh, shorter sets and uh, in different kind of clubs so it's a little bit more mainstream uh, but also still you know with a bit of very you know housey underground edge to it but per page is a lot more storytelling yeah so uh, why did you decide to bring back your purple haze alias uh, in 2017? Uh, well, yeah, I, I was I was producing this track, uh, which was supposed to be a Sand of Adorn track. Uh, but when if I, I finished it, I, I I heard this this purple haze, uh, you know, sound back into uh, I into the track, and that was a sound I already did about 12 years ago. Um, so I really liked it, and 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 my 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 wife and manager, she said, uh, why don't you produce more of these tracks? because I see you're, you're really enjoying you know, yourself in the studio. Uh, so I did, and I, I started producing one track after the other. It went very quickly. Uh, so we knew you know, there's something you know, we want, want to do so, uh, with this, 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 uh, this, this new sound. Um, so we decided to, to make it a live act as well, um, you know, to combine uh, the, everything that came out of the studio and, and be put on, on the Spectrum album uh, on stage as well. And uh, you know, for me, it's great. You know, I, I can do uh, the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, speaking of uh, Purple Haze, uh, your latest release as Purple Haze is a track uh, Flanging, which is a collab uh, you did with Ferry Corsten. Well, it was about time you guys were making a track together, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely. It's uh, the first time we spoke about it. it was the first time I, I, I met him, um, um, like I said before, in, in, in Australia. Uh, so I was like, yeah, let's do a track together, you know. I, I already knew Ferry from the time I, I was still going to the club. So it was, you know, it was a big special moment for me to ask him to, to, to be in the studio. Uh, but then it never really came came through and uh, uh, we, we, uh, we saw each other a few months ago at, at a festival over in I think it was Thailand and uh, so you know I said to Ferry come on when, when are we gonna end up in the studio and uh, yeah I, I think two weeks later we uh, ended up in the studio uh, you know messing about on a, on a keyboard uh, you know finding you know the perfect combination between his sound and my sound and uh, you know flanging was born yeah cool so can we expect any other collabs soon as Purple Ace or as Sander van Doorn? <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, I'm working on a few collabs right now, both uh, with uh, Purple Haze as well as Sander van Doorn. I uh, can't tell, tell too much about it just yet, but uh, they're really cool uh, collaborations uh, with uh, artists with, with completely different w w range of sounds, uh, which challenges me in the studio. And uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's it's always cool, you know, to, to see what, what other people are doing, how, how they use their software and uh, for them, you know, how I use my software. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm loving the collapse and uh, there's definitely a few coming up. Yeah, and that will all be this year? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So in the past you also did release tracks under names such as uh, Sam Sharp and Sandler, for example. Uh, do you think you will ever bring back one of those projects as well? 
I, I would say that would be a little bit too much for me to be honest. Uh, you know, I, 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 want, I solely want to focus on Santa Fe Noir and Purple Haze. So, you know, I, I can really, you know, put all my energy into two projects. I, I would say two projects will be enough for me. Yeah, yeah. So what else are you working on right now? Uh, right now, uh, well, a lot of Purple Haze tracks, a lot of Santa Van Doren tracks, and um, I'm finishing a collab right now, and um, I'm working on a new new Santa Van Doren track, so uh, uh, also thinking about making a new artist album. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's going to be a Santa Van Doren or Purple Haze uh, yet. Okay. So when you're not in the studio, what kind of music do you listen to then? Um, I, I listen to very moody bands like uh, Fever A, um, uh, Sigur Ross. I actually went to a concert in Amsterdam from Sigur Ross, uh, I think it was uh, one and a half years ago. It's my last concert, it was, was absolutely amazing. It's, uh, it's a band where, you know, when they're, when they're playing in a room, nobody's moving, everybody's just like standing there listening, you know, in awe. And that's, for me, that's, that's, that's perfect music. Yeah. It's, it's a band from Iceland and you can really, you know, hear that sounds, you know, back, back here, you know, in, into their tracks. Yeah. So, and the last question: pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Uh, I, you know, I actually really enjoy pineapple on pizza. So, yeah, yeah, definitely pizza Hawaii for me. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much for your time and good luck on everything. Yeah, cheers. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Sander van Dorn about his classic riff. Sander, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below and make sure to subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.